Hey, welcome to E Crime Bites Season 2, Episode 4. A YouTuber crashes his plane for the likes. Now you're going, what is this about? Well, hold the fuck on because this is going to be one hell of an episode that does have electronic evidence in it and it's about the internet because we're talking about YouTube. But just hold on because I, I don't even know how to describe this other than just get in get into this case but i will first pop up the thumbnail that i put together for this gentleman his name is trevor jacob and he's a social media person so he has a lot on his instagram this is an instagram picture of him skydiving naked and i was like how could i make seth so unbelievably uncomfortable by looking at our youtube thumbnail and i said hey this guy's junk i guess is kind of in the middle of this but i'm just gonna put his eyes just above the title to this episode so he's just staring at you real creepy like and if you're watching this on video you actually see the thumbnail that i'm talking about this is a picture that he had on his instagram of him skydiving if you go whoa that's kind of crazy trust me this this case is like this from beginning to end all right so let's get seth and i back up here on your screen and let me jump into the case details. And we're just gonna run through the bullets that we usually run through for every case so you know what's gonna be coming at you. First bullet, technology. Relatively light here. We have airplanes, I consider a technology because full disclosure, I have my private pilot certificate as well and I'm gonna be able to talk you through some maps and things that you aren't gonna see in the news that I actually put together. And airplanes have things like GPS and well, a lot of airplanes have things like GPS in them and just important evidence later on of a crash that you would want to retreat. There's going to be video and there's going to be video on things like mobile phones and there's going to be video on things like GoPros, like the sport cameras that aren't necessarily a phone, but they're kind of like, you know, people will strap them to helmets. You'll see them strapped to the outside of a plane here. That's electronic evidence in this case and YouTube. So I'm pretty sure most of our listeners are familiar with YouTube, especially if you're watching us on YouTube. But the reason why this crime happened was for likes on YouTube. It was that simple, that simple. <laughs> so I'm lumping it in with technology. So tell us about the crime here, Seth. So I guess there's really only one crime, although I think there was probably a litany of crimes relating to what he did, but they, the crime that he, I think, ultimately um, was held responsible for was the altered or destroyed tangible object uh, associated with impeding the investigation of, you know, the NTSB and the FAA, who are the federal investigators uh, responsible for any kind of, I guess, flight, aviation, or transportation generally. And uh, this comes with a 20-year maximum sentence, so we'll come back to that issue. Yeah, I agree. There are so so many laws he broke outside this and we will point them out and address them as we go along the way the one that he pleaded to is the one that seth just read to you so now the criminal his name is trevor daniel jacob he's done a lot of stuff in his life he's a former olympian and we're going to talk about what he did he's a nitro circus performer and probably half our crowds go hey i know who nitro circus is and the other half goes who the hell's that we're going to explain it here in a few minutes and he's just an all-around quote-unquote extreme sports athlete okay so who are the victims here i don't really know uh <laughs> i i mean i you know like any kind of case where you have kind of somebody who is uh, um, what is the technical term shitbag somebody who does something s so incredibly stupid um, you can argue that the taxpayers are ultimately the victims because they have to foot the bill for whatever litigation or criminal proceedings uh, follow this user. Nobody was hurt on this one, so no spoiler there, right? A plane was crashed, nobody died in it. I think it was a perfectly, sorry, a good waste of a perfectly good airplane. That's that's the, that's the one victim, I would argue. And then, I, you know what? I mean, I think the victim is society. And I mean that not, not tongue in cheek because if we're at a place now where somebody has to do something this stupid in order to make a living, right? I mean, because ultimately, you know, how do people on social media or social media influencers make money? 
They get people looking at their sites or their, their Instagram so they can get advertising, right? I mean, that's really what we're coming down to. The fact that that's where we are as a society, I find to be a little disheartening, right? I have, I have no qualms with people making money or making their living however they want to, especially if nobody gets hurt. However, um, if you're doing things that are so outlandish that are potentially dangerous um, in, in order just to get likes, in order to make a living, it's not great. Yeah. And so why did I choose this, choose this case? Several reasons. There's Nitro Circus, there's airplane crashes, there's electronics, YouTube, and later on you're gonna find there's a cover up involved and I say, why not this case? So let me walk you through our acts for this week in this episode. So the acts we're gonna bring you this week. Act number one, which is the one you're watching. This is coming out Monday. This is nice day for a flight because that's some of the first words he says in the first video that we're gonna walk you through. And I didn't even mention yet, but we have the video of this crash. This is the, one of the very first cases that we've brought to you where we can actually show you video of the crime as the crime happened, which is another reason why I picked this. Like I said, there were so many reasons. I've been sitting on this case for a while now. I've been so excited to bring you guys this one. So just buckle up. So that's act one. Act two is coming out on Tuesday, which is engines out and you'll find out why. Act three on Wednesday is going to be the investigations. That's the FAA and the NTSB that Seth just talked about earlier. Act four is going to be the cover up and that's going to be what this gentleman did to try to make the investigations go away. And that'll be our concluding act. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just get right into our story for act one. Nice day for a flight. Were you going to say something, Seth? Just a point of correction. Please have respect for fucking light it, fucking light it. Cause we had video of that crime too. Ah, <laughs> yes, yes, we did. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> okay. And that's okay, such yes, a key element of our whole show is fucking light it. So just, just putting it out there. All right. Yeah. Well, this will be the first one for season two. How about that? Yes. All right. Fair all right. enough. Fair enough. All right. So to get into this nice day for a flight. All right. So this is the picture that I took our thumbnail of. This is the original. This is the one that came off of Instagram. So this is the gentleman that we're going to be talking about throughout this episode. So already this should set the bar of your expectations. And for you audio listeners, you're going, what is he looking at? Well, it's a gentleman that's I'd say naked. I don't see anything Pretty covering sure anything naked. anywhere other than just the equipment you would wear to jump out of an airplane. And there's obviously a deployed parachute above him. You don't see the parachute, but you see the lines going up and you see like a backpack on him. And there's like a seat, I guess that he's sitting in that covers his, his important parts. And there's like this, I don't know, fanny pack ish looking thing on the front that covers his important parts. And he's wearing sandals and he's looks like maybe has a selfie stick while he's doing this. And so this isn't the actual jump that we're going to show you. This is just a picture of another jump that he made, because this is the type of thing that he does all the time. I'll bring Seth and I back up to give you a little background on who Trevor Jacob is. He's a former snowboarding Olympian, and this is circa 2014. He was in the Olympic Winter Games and there was a ninth place in the men's snowboard cross uh, tournament. I don't know. What do you call yeah, snowboarding? Yeah, they usually Seth? do like half pipe type stuff. You know, if you watch um, uh, the Olympics or other kinds of snowboarding thing. My kids are snowboarders. I'm a skier. So, yeah, there's a big half pipe and they, you know, come in and they do jumps and flips and then it's gauged upon the level of difficulty in their execution. Yeah, so run i guess that i've heard him say run before okay so um he's also a member of nitro circus and nitro circus if you're not familiar with it it's kind of like a reality stunt show on i think it's mtv or vh1 or something along those lines where the cast will do extreme sports type of things like jump out of airplanes or, you know, flip quads or jump out of airplanes with quads or you name it. And it's the person that you would know the most from it is Travis 
Pastrana from Annapolis, Maryland. And we talked about Annapolis in one of our cases in season one, and that's where I live. He's known for jumping, well, he lives here, and he's known also for jumping Ego Alley, which is this like little waterway where people bring their big boats in to show them off. And it's a pretty interesting thing that he did. And if you're interested in that, I'll actually put a link in our sources section and you can go watch the video. It's pretty long. I'm not going to put it on here, but it's, it's pretty cool. And it shows you Annapolis and then it goes out and shows you more of Maryland. So Travis, I would say people kind of consider him a local hero. Okay. So when he says something, people are, at least in this area, will listen to him. So we get back to the individual we're talking about, which is Trevor Jacob. So what Trevor Jacob, him being in Nitro Circus brings him into contact with Travis Pastrana and Trevor Jacob always had Travis Pastrana as one of his gurus slash mentors. It's the guy he wanted to be when he grew up. If you can imagine that type of feeling between the two where it was like Travis was established out there in the field and um, Trevor Jacob is younger up and coming and is looking up to Travis and how he does this. Back at 2014, Trevor Jacob was in the Olympics doing snowboarding. And so they interviewed Travis Pastrana about Trevor Jacob. And I read this after I read all the other stuff in this case. And I'm reading this whole thing and going, I have to put this in the episode because it's almost all foreshadowing. Absolutely everything. The way this the way Travis is talking about Trevor Jacob. So here are some quotes, some relevant quotes from Travis Pastrana about Trevor Jacob. But you have to think this is circa 2014 in the Olympic realm. This is not later on when Trevor Jacob has crashed his plane. OK, so. Travis says, it's difficult to tell if Trevor is crazy or brilliant. He's one of the greatest all around athletes I've ever had the pleasure of being around. The tree jump was typical Trevor. He puts himself in positions that are way over his head, but always seems to find a way to come out a hero. Trevor is so special because his athletic prowess transfers to all action sports. Very few people are great at a single sport. Trevor is great at everything. And then Travis was asked the question, is there anything Jacob would not do? And Travis says, Trevor is a smart kid. He wouldn't put himself in a position that he thinks he won't survive or in a situation that he doesn't think he can win. The problem with being so good is that there aren't many situations he doesn't think he can win. And to his credit, he's probably right. And so at the Olympics, Jacob is basically competing against a bunch of snowboarders that have a lot more experience in them. So the tone of the article shifts to this. And so then Travis goes on to say, there's no doubt in my mind that he will get everything out of himself, but I don't know that a part-time snowboarder can beat guys that have worked for this their entire life for this moment. Having said that, I would never bet against Trevor. There is no one in the games who I would want to win more than him. And I know he could pull an upset. So yeah, I thought this was pretty funny. Think about that later on when we tell you all the stuff that um, Trevor Jacob did. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna spoil it. He's still an asshole. All right, so let's let's move over to uh, the flight details. So now we're at uh, November 24th, 2021. So I know Jones totally geeked out over this. What type of airplane was he on? He was on a Taylor Craft BL65 with the number N29508. That's just, I guess, the uh, identifier for the plane. Uh, Jones, want to tell us about this airplane? Yeah, in that identifier, if you're not familiar with aviation, um, and if you missed the beginning, I, I have my private pilot certificate, so I'll try to explain as much of this stuff that's not news articles to you, and hopefully that'll be a little extra that you get when you listen to us. So I went and I did research on the plane. It was a 1940s airplane. That tells you some things. Well, first of all, don't freak out because most people from car land go into plane land and say 1940s is old. 1940 is not that old in plane world. They get re they basically have to do inspections and refurbishments and all this kind of stuff that keeps them very safe. 
So a 1940s airplane is still a safe airplane as much as a 1990s or even a 2020s airplane. The one thing I wanna mention, and we're gonna mention this later on, and it'll make more context to you later on, is a 1940s airplane isn't required to have all the safety stuff that a 1970s airplane, I think I think the cutoff is 1972, I'll mention it later on. But there's a cutoff where there's safety equipment in the airplane such that if you crash a plane, it basically lets satellites know exactly where the plane crash is and it's supposed to make everything we're gonna explain to you faster than days. You know, finding out that a plane crashed and where the plane is much faster. So yeah, the rest of the flight on... details. So the flight was supposed to leave Lompoc City Airport. I'm not sure where that is, uh, but it's somewhere north of LA to Mammoth Lakes, California. I think it was a fairly short flight. We'll have a map to show you guys what that looks like. Now, Jacob had mounted several video cameras to his plane. We actually have that video. Now, why would you want to do that? Obviously, because you are going to be filming yourself flying the plane. Okay, so Jones has up a video now for those of you who are uh, only on audio, and it gives you a little bit of context of the distance of this flight. Jones, do we have a distance here? Do we have a key that we can kind of tell us? I want to say it looks like a couple hundred miles. It's uh, 128 nautical miles, which is a little longer than a normal driving mile. It's right. It's I don't even, I don't even want to go down that route of explaining the difference. Yeah. Miles so basically, sizes. he was flying from somewhere off the coast to inland uh, in a place called Mammoth Lakes. OK, so and also we mentioned he had a camera selfie stick with him. So oh, that was in a different picture, but he had that as well. When he took off, he was wearing a parachute. Keith. Why would somebody ever want to do that? You normally don't. For normal flights, you don't. Even spin training, which is purposely taking your plane that's rated to do this out there, making it spin, learning how to recover. So that way, if you ever get into that situation, you're able to recover from it. Even in that situation, you're not required to wear a parachute. I've done that. I've done spin training without a parachute. The only times you're actually required to wear a parachute is when you're expecting some kind of aerobatics and that's it's pretty rare i mean you know you're going to be doing aerobatics when you go into it you don't just wear a parachute on a normal flight that seth is going to describe to you here yeah so apparently on the flight our, our our hero here was holding a bag that looked like it contained marijuana or weed in it but apparently it was not it was the ashes of his friend Johnny Strange, who we found out, uh, find out he died previously in what's called a wingsuit accident. And I'll let Jones explain what that is. But uh, the idea was um, that uh, Trevor was going to uh, spread uh, his friend's ashes uh, all over the mountains. Keith, what's a wingsuit accident? Well, a wingsuit, have you ever, you ever seen flying squirrels? And then you've seen those people that look like frog squirrels oh. down the mountainsides. That's a wingsuit. Yeah, and I've seen it in the movie. Sounded, it was crazy. It sounded like it was doing one of those type of things and he yeah. ended up dying. And so now Trevor Jacob has the ashes of his friend Johnny Strange that he's going to spread over the mountains. And let me bring this chart back up for you. This is an actual aviation chart that... I pulled from just a free public aviation website. And so the green arrow is Santa Barbara-ish, if you're on video, by the way. The yellow arrow is the approximate area I'm guessing he is going to. He just kept saying Mammoth, which is that mountain range. So it could be more north, but I just kind of picked the southern base and said, this is probably the area-ish where he's going. Now that distance between those two arrows is about 128 nautical miles, which is just slightly over 128 normal miles. In plane terms, if you're flying a plane of that era and an engine, you're probably, that's gonna be probably a two hour flight. Say you go about 60 knots, which is about 60 miles an hour, and you're looking at about 120 knots, 120 miles out, that's going to be about two hours. And then 120 back, that's going to be a, probably another two hours. Now, wind can play a huge factor in here, especially with slower planes. And I'm probably 
guessing really low on the speed at 60 miles an hour just to make the math simple it could be higher it could be like 80 miles an hour it could be as high maybe as 100 miles an hour but you get the picture here that he's not just jumping in there going up for a few minutes dropping some ashes and coming back down he's going on a very planned flight now we have this for you the whole the whole thing is publicly available the whole video of this is publicly available. We are cutting out the relevant sections and playing them for you so we can talk about them. Now, this is one of those episodes where I really have to apologize to our audio only listeners. I'm gonna try to pause and describe stuff as much as possible and so will Seth, but it's video. We're looking at video and it's gonna come across a lot better on video. So if you get a chance to look at it on YouTube, it'll make a lot more sense than the weird sounds that you'll be hearing in these few video clips we'll be playing over these next couple of acts for you. So with that, I'm gonna play the takeoff video and this is unedited. This is from the point where he takes off to the point where he has engine trouble and the whole segment is one minute and 11 seconds. So at this point in the video, there's a white plane with some blue stripes on it taking off. Looks like a, if you haven't seen this type of plane, think of like an old Piper Cub. It has obviously cameras on the tail, on the left wing, and um, that's all we're able to tell at this point in the video. So if you didn't hear him, he was basically saying that it was a beautiful day. Um, and it is, there's not a cloud in the sky if you can't see this video. And, and again, if you can jump on the video, it's a lot easier if you can just see it. And he then holds up a bag that looks like it has some kind of white substance in it, a white gray substance, and says, I got Johnny and we're on our way to Mammoth. point of the video the engine goes out and it's very obvious that the engine goes out it goes quiet and you see from all the different camera angles that the propeller is not even twisting in the wind at this point all right so in that video we just showed you the relevant parts of him taking off beautiful day nice day for a flight cameras apparently mounted everywhere in his airplane and the engine cuts out so now with the engine out and you're probably saying keith where did the engine go out now none of the news articles show you this so i sort of had to kind of calculate it on my own just based upon what i know as a pilot and i took that aviation chart that i showed you earlier and i took the information that it was 35 minutes into the flight when this happened and i know it happens over a mountain range so with that information i was able to I was able to put this map together for you where the green was the takeoff, the yellow was the landing, and the red is approximately where I think he is when this all goes down. And I, what I can do is even blow it up for you. And you can see there, there's that slight mountain range and that's where I think this happened. Just based upon all the news articles that I read and the court documents saying it was 35 minutes into the flight, which just doing a kind of a back of the napkin calculation and how long the I thought the flight would last that looked like the mountain range okay so with that we are done with act one 
we got a video out of the way, which is him taking off, and the good stuff is about to come at you. And this is Act 2, Engine Out. So if you liked anything in this Act 1, please, if you're on YouTube, like this video, subscribe to us. If you're on audio-only podcasting apps, please subscribe to us. If you're on any type of social media that we stream this to, like Twitter or X, I guess it's called now, LinkedIn, Facebook, any of those, just like our content if you could reshare it. And if you're on Apple Podcasts especially, if you could leave us a five-star and a review, we would really appreciate that because that helps us move up the charts. And Apple Podcasts is about half of our audio listeners. So with that, thanks for sticking around for Act 1, and we will see you tomorrow on Act 2, Engines Out.